All right, guys, in this video, I'm going to share with you five things that I really wish I knew before I started getting my personal finances in order, uh, start investing and ultimately building wealth. Now, these five things are not only going to be able to help you, but also if you've got uh, children or those close to you, you can pass this information on to them, which honestly is going to make a, such a big impact in their lives. Uh, I've not got children yet, but these are the five key things that I know are really going to help my children when they have them, and I can't wait to pass them on. So the first one is all around income. Now, um, the reason I say this is because in order to build uh, bigger wealth and to leave generational wealth for your family, you're going to need to accelerate your income. And the best way to do that is through your own business. I see it time and time again where people want to invest more, but due to the restrictions of their job, their salary, uh, not enough overtime, um, that kind of uh, puts a glass ceiling on their limit. And that's not a good thing, especially if you're serious about building wealth. So what I did at a very young age, I started my first business at 24 years old um, and uh, I went into the property industry. And by 26 years old, uh, I built a successful business and achieved financial independence. And uh, by 27, I built my second business and, um, you know, things are going great. But if I was in a job still working in the police force or whatever job that may be, um, I would be at the whim of my employer's uh, pay, right? And of course, I can work overtime, but again, there's a restriction on how much overtime I can work. I kind of clicked onto this quite early in my life at 24, starting my own business, but many people find themselves um, not growing wealth as fast as they'd like. And the main reason for that is because they're not accelerating their income. They're just getting paid from a job and they're not using their uh, downtime, their weekends or their rest days to uh, build another side hustle or business to accelerate that income. Exactly the same premise that I did when I was working full time in the police force. I used my off days or my rest days to build a business and accelerate my income and achieve my freedom. And once I achieved my freedom, I was then be able to put more time into the business, which accelerate my business even more. I was able to build new businesses and generate other streams of income. So my recommendation is think about the skills that you have and think about the businesses that you'd ideally want to go into. I'm not a big fan of following your passion. I think too many people who uh, are already successful say that. If you've been working a job for so long, you're not really gonna know what your passion is. And something that always trumps passion is demand. All right, time and time again, people come to me uh, through Shifts to Success, which is my company, and they'll ask me around business ideas. Um, and basically, you know, they'll share passion, but due to research and finding out if there's demand, you find out there's actually none. So we want to stay away from the areas where there's no demand because at the end of the day, we need paying customers. And those paying customers are going to give you the income you'd like to not only leave your job, but also to accelerate your income, which is going to allow you to invest more in your life. So the second thing I want to share with you is all around expenses. And to kind of summarize this step, there's a great quote which starts off by saying that financial literacy is not a side effect of wealth, but rather wealth is a side effect of financial literacy. What we're saying there is that just by having lots and lots of money is not going to give you the skill set to be able to manage and grow that money, okay? Instead, build the skill sets of financial literacy first, which is really going to help you build that long-term wealth. And the way that I've uh, done this in relation to uh, expenses in my life is that I uh, budget. And I know budgeting is not sexy whatsoever. Um, and definitely, I'm not here to tell you to live like a peasant and, you know, scrimp and save all the time because there's things that are really going to be meaningful to you and, you know, really valuable to you. So for me, you know, I play golf regularly. Um, I will spend money on that. And golf is an expensive sport to some. And uh, that's meaningful to me. So that's something that gives me happiness in life. And there's some things like in relation to the gym. So like gym clothes or maybe an eye watch and things like that I'm going to spend money on because it gives me that happiness and it's meaningful to me, right? It makes me happy. So my job's not here to, you know, tell you to, you know, scrimp and scrape and, you know, live so frugal that it just causes you misery. 
But what I'm saying is to get a grip of your finances. You know, grab yourself a budgeting uh, spreadsheet. And if you want one of those, by the way, email me at alex at shifts to success.com. I'm more than happy to uh, provide you one of those. By really allowing you to get a grip of your finances, you can look at your income statements over the past 12 months and you can look at cancelling or renegotiating um, items that are costing you in your life, okay? So an example of this is that you might be paying for a gym membership that you're not using anymore, right? You should because gym is really good for you, but you might be, you know, spending money on that and actually um, you could have better use that money for your wealth building. Or it could be that you're having too many takeaways every so often and actually you don't realize you're spending that much on takeaways, but by looking at your finances, you can get a grip of it and actually put a stop to that. Or it could be that you might want to renegotiate. So an example of this, something I did a long time ago, is that with my broadband and um, my internet and uh, TV package, I basically called the provider. I explained that I was looking for a better deal and I'm actually thinking about leaving them. And they actually renegotiated for us and actually changed the terms, which actually reduced the overall cost of that. So again, that helped get a grip of the personal finances and actually save money. And also, when it comes to, you know, budgeting and your expenses, one thing that psychologically you may not be aware of is something called lifestyle inflation, okay? And this is where people trap themselves with um, materialistic things, okay? Um, again, I'm not here to say that materialistic things are bad. You know, I like nice cars and I like nice things. It's completely fine. But I don't make sure that I'm trapped by them, right? I'm debt free. Um, I've been debt free for some time, and um, I will never go into debt to, you know, have a luxury in my life. But what I see that a lot of people do is they will get a pay rise in their job, perhaps, um, and with that new pay rise, they will spend it and they will trap themselves further. So they'll always feel broke month to month, even though they've just got a pay rise because they might have bought something else. They might have got a bigger mortgage or they've got a better car or, you know, they've, you know, they've spent more on holidays as a result. So they're kind of trapping themselves, even though they're getting more income. And the same can be said with business owners. You know, a lot of business owners, they become a lot financially successful, um, but because there's not a margin between the amount of money they earn and their lifestyle due to houses, cars, um, it could be trips or other things that they've got going on, well, they're actually, they're, they're, they're broke, right? They're, they're trapped by their, by their lifestyle. Um, so that's something I recommend you always be mindful of. If you get a pay rise or if you start a business, make sure you're not increasing your lifestyle straight away um, that you actually become trapped in it and you actually end up on this kind of treadmill of working all the time. Um, wealth for me is not just money, okay? Money is a tool allowing me to gain wealth. For me, wealth is freedom. Knowing that I don't have to set an alarm clock, knowing that I've not got a boss, knowing that I don't have to work again in my life. That to me is the ultimate wealth, right? Absolute freedom to do what I want. And uh, you just can't do that despite how much money you got coming in if you don't keep an eye on your expenses. So guys, that's a big, big tip. Number two, track your expenses and budget. And also, this is gonna help you build that financial literacy skill set. So the third key step that I wanna share with you is all around savings. Now you know how to accelerate your income. Now you know about how to track your expenses. We wanna make sure that you're actually saving money from your income and expenses. What you don't wanna do is track your expenses. You've saved all this money as a result of tracking it. And then you don't wanna splurge that because you've kind of defeated the purpose. So my recommendation is to save uh, every single month and you wanna pay yourself every single month when you get your pay slip or you know if you're in your own business, pay yourself first anyway, um, because that's gonna allow you to build the habit of saving, okay? Now, my recommendation here is uh, to start off with as, as, as much as you can, to be honest, um, but a minimum of 10% every single month, okay? Um, ideally, you wanna start increasing that to you know, 20, 25, 30, etc. because by doing that, and this is, uh, I heard this from a good friend of mine, Jason Greystone, that by saving more and more and more, it actually puts pressure, financial pressure on your income. And that's not a bad thing. I don't know if you can see behind me, it says um, pressure creates diamonds. It's true. By saving more and more money every single quarter or year, that puts uh, less kind of uh, income into your own personal life. 
So what does that force you to do? Well, it forces you to accelerate your income even more. And that's a win-win. It forces you to get out there and hustle and you know build what you've got to to gain more income. But also on the flip side, your savings carry on increasing, okay? And those savings, of course, you can invest into um, wealth building strategies like index funds. So that's kind of the savings aspect that I want to share with you. But also I want to share that uh, when it comes to savings, my recommendation on actually building a buffer is going to be really, really key to your success when it comes to your financial future. Um, there's loads of people out there when they talk about finances, about building a three month, a six month, a nine month or a 12 month buffer. And ultimately, that's up to you. However, in my life, I've built a six month cash buffer that I've built, I've put aside in a separate account that I will not touch unless it's a an emergency. We call it a rainy day fund, okay? And that rainy day fund, that emergency fund might not be touched for several years, right? Because we don't know when an emergency is gonna, gonna, gonna happen. Um, I'm not gonna dip into it. I'm not gonna, you know, spend money from that account and, you know, be okay with the fact that, you know, an emergency might not happen. That's not what that account's all about. It literally puts a buffer between you and the world, whatever the world's gonna throw at you. Now, the reason I have a six month buffer and not more is because of inflation. You know, around the UK, we have about two to 3% inflation. And if I have more in there, then more of my money is being eroded. So ideally, after you've saved your six month buffer, everything else after that, you wanna invest to build that wealth because actually you're beating inflation by investing, okay? Your, your money's not eroding. Now, of course, you might be saving some things like a house or it could be uh, something else like a, a wedding, for example. Uh, then my recommendation is to get your buffer in place anyway. And once that buffer's in place and you carry on saving, as mentioned, um, you might wanna split. So let's say you, you save a thousand pound every single month after your buffer's in place. Well, you might want to put £500 into your investments and £500 for saving for your wedding or saving for your house. So big, big step, get in the habit of saving money and using that to then invest into whatever wealth um, investment strategy you want to. I'm a big, big fan of index fund investing, which uh, you hopefully know about through a previous video that I've created. Um, if you don't know how to build wealth uh, with index funds, which is again, my favorite investment strategy, please check out that video. I'll leave a link in the resources below um, and hopefully you're gonna get really excited about building wealth using that strategy. So the fourth key thing I wanna share with you is ROI, return on investment. And side by side of this comes down to your tolerance for risk. So what this basically means is first of all, selecting the investment strategy that you want to use to allow you to build wealth and hit your financial targets. You don't build wealth by just planning, you actually have a goal, you have a plan in place and you execute on that plan. So if you've watched a previous video of my wealth building strategies, I have a property investment, uh, in particular HMOs, houses of multiple occupation, I have individual stocks and also index funds. Now, index funds are my favorite. I love them. They're passive and they're quite easy to do and set up. Um, and I'm going to share kind of what I mean by uh, tolerance of risk. So depending on what platform you use, you can um, choose uh, certain uh, portfolio mixes, such as a 80-20 split. So you can have an 80% stocks, which is more an aggressive uh, kind of um, investment strategy. And then you have bonds, which are kind of a more conservative investment strategy. And some of those platforms out there, such as Vanguard, it could be Fidelity as well, or Hargreaves Line Downs, they have uh, certain mixes allowing you to um, basically pick a strategy with regards to index funds that allow you to um, pick one based on your tolerance to risk. So for me, I'm 31 years old, okay? So my index fund strategy is 100% stocks, okay? I want to invest in companies 100% because if a recession was going to happen or or a, a, a pullback in the market, I'm going to be okay because I am i don't plan on retiring yet, right? I've got, you know, even if it was 10 years away, I'd only be 41. Um, so I've got decades and decades uh, for that to, um, you know, ride itself out, even though I've got 100% an equity um, strategy, which is all around stocks, right? However, Someone who is maybe 60 years old would probably have a lower 
um, a, a, a tolerance of risk, okay? Because they're coming to that age of retirement. So they might have um, a uh, more conservative approach where they'll have more bonds and less equity, less stocks, right? And because stocks and equity are more volatile, they'll go up and down all the time, whereas bonds tend to kind of have a gradual um, kind of flow to them. They, they don't, they're less volatile. So the bonds kind of balance it out to a more conservative approach because that individual is going to live from their uh, their their wealth essentially when they come to retirement. Whereas someone like me, as I mentioned, I'm much younger, so you know I want to go full in on my uh, investment aggressiveness because I can ride out the volatility, I can ride out the recessions, I can ride out the pullbacks. So step number four is all about return on investment and also your tolerance of risk. Remember, you don't just hope, you set a goal, you plan, and also you execute on that plan. So hopefully that makes sense. So the last key thing I wanna share with you is all around time. And I just wanna say that time is the biggest variable when it comes to your investment and wealth building journey. Um, as I mentioned, you know, I got involved in property investment at 24 years old. I started investing in index funds around 27 years old and uh, individual stocks around 29 years old, you know, soon after. So uh, although that's all there and, you know, it's okay in some regards, I really wish I started sooner, right? That is one of my biggest regrets. I wish I knew about this stuff when I was 18 or 19 years old because I would be so much farther ahead. And for those who are investing and you're 18 and you're 19 or your early 20s watching this and you are building wealth, you do not realize how far ahead you are when it comes to the general public, when it comes to building that generational wealth. So well done to you. Um, but to make this point clear, I'm gonna use two examples, okay? I'm gonna start off with person A and then we'll move on to person B. Now person A, they are starting from scratch and they want to get involved in index funds, okay? And we're gonna say they can achieve 10% due to their investment strategy, and they're gonna start contributing 500 pound per month for 20 years, okay? Now, the end value of that, based on 10% and 500 pound contributions, and due to the implications and factors of compound interest, they will end up with a total value of around 382,000, not bad. However, now we can move on to uh, person B. And person B is exactly the same, but the only difference is they invest for 30 years. So they're starting from scratch. They can achieve 10% from their index funds as well. They're contributing 500 pound per month, just like person A. However, they have got 10 years extra and they are investing for 30 years. And their total value is over 1 million pounds, okay? 1.1 million pounds, in fact. And uh, that is just staggering. It's actually more than double the end value because they have more time in the market. They have more time in relation to their investments. They've got their money working for them a lot more due to that extra decade they've gained, okay? So if you're watching this and you're worried about not having enough money, et cetera, to start investing, you know, definitely look at your expenses and get investing ASAP. The sooner you start, the better that will be because of compound interest, okay? Which is basically uh, the interest on the interest that you're earning from your investments. In fact, one of our clients who is a serving police officer, who is a part of my company, Shifts to Success, he was interested in uh, investing. And he said that he wanted to leave it for one more year until he had more money to invest. And we worked through the numbers and what we found by leaving it one year, essentially he would have lost 137,000 pound plus from his total value. And sometimes we forget about that. If 137,000 pound was sitting in front of you and someone was gonna to say to you, this is what you're gonna lose, you're probably gonna invest a lot sooner, right? But because you don't see it yet, and people don't think long term, they don't think of the consequences that's gonna happen on the end value, okay? So definitely invest as soon as you can, and I promise you it's gonna make a big difference in your, in your life full stop. So I hope these five points have helped, and I promise you if you implement them into your life, they will make a massive, profound difference in your life. Okay, and I just wanna say that you might be uh, watching this and you might be of an older age and you might feel like you've missed the boat. 
okay? And I just wanna say that's absolute nonsense. Um, whether you are you know, in your 50s, which some of our uh, clients are, and they're investing, and they're getting great returns from their investments, or whether you're in your teenage years, right? The earlier you invest, the better that's gonna be for you. So don't ever feel like you've missed the boat or you're too early to invest. And also to kind of summarize this, um, it's quite simple, right? Spend less than you earn and invest the difference. And now what I'm saying there is you don't have to be in business to build wealth. If you are in business, that's great because you've not got a kind of a cap on your income. You can earn as much as you like, which of course is gonna feed your investments much better. But I know several people who are building massive wealth and they've, they're have they in their jobs. They're earning their job income, okay? So don't feel like you need to build a business because some of you may not want to go into business. So you can definitely use your job to your job income to build wealth if you want to. You just need to spend less than you earn and invest the difference. So guys, I hope this has all helped. If you've got any questions, drop them in the comments below. And if you're interested in investing and learning about more about wealth building and index fund investing, click on the link below. It'll take you to a webpage where you can learn all about it and more. And please guys, don't forget to like, subscribe and share. And I'll see you on the next video. Cheers.